Hey all, and welcome back to Fuzzy Dutzy Gaming and a new video covering the juicing strategy that I've been using to make consistent and easy money in Path of Exile. So before we start, I just want to go over my definition of juicing as it's very different to some other players who might play 8 to 10 hours a day. So I'm not a player who spends multiple results juicing um, like a couple of maps. I like to map relatively quickly but squeeze as much juice into the maps without making it firstly too long to complete. Like I don't want a map to take me 15 to 20 minutes to complete and loot. And I also don't want to make it too difficult to complete, um, as in mobs being too tanky or it tanking my computer. So my strategy is one that most players who can comfortably clear T60 maps will be able to do. As I mentioned, I don't like boosting difficulty and I don't like spending too long in maps. And as I've said, I don't have the most amazing computer in the world. So due to this, my strategy doesn't include the main two juicing points of a lot of other strategies, and that's Delirium and Beyond. These are both out the door. There's also no annoying section or map rolling. I basically out my maps to get a half decent quantity and make sure there's not any map mods that are going to break the map for me and then just roll any three section modifiers. Now the reason I say three is that we're using a cheap charge compass to help boost the strategy up, but we'll come on to that later. So firstly, what's the strategy? So in a nutshell, we're chain running T16 maps with the usual E2 Worlds influence. We're also running Atlas passives for Breach, Expedition, Strong boxes, essences, the Eater of Wells nodes, influence pack size, sextant use, and then some map nodes with the leftover points. Now, the only mechanic we physically have to stop for when mapping is expedition, but it's so rewarding it makes it worthwhile. So we'll start with the Atlas passive tree. Now, this is the tree that I take, taking in all the nodes that I've just discussed. Um, I do have most of my points collected. I think I might be missing two from invitations. Um, so if you don't have as many points, you can drop the map nodes or even essences as their value is not exactly great now. But I do like to use them to craft and try and get some lucky items. Now, these are the nodes that you have to take to help maximize your gains. So feel free to take a screenshot if it helps and we'll move on. So we've covered the passive tree. So let's move on to talk about what you need to run and more importantly, how much it's going to cost. So the average cost to set up each map is about 12 chaos and we're using the following. We're using Awakened Sextants, we're using Sacrifice Fragments, we're using Fortune Favors the Brave on the map device as it adds really good quantity when combined with these nodes in the tree. If you're not taking these nodes, feel free to use Kirax Strongbox mod, this is also really good. We're using just Rusted Expedition Scarabs which cost 4 chaos per map. We're also using Polished Breach, which adds two breaches to the map, and they cost one Chaos. We're using Polished because Gilded in bulk are like 6 or 7C. It's just not worth it. There's no point paying that much money for an extra Breach. And then we're also using the Charge Compass with four uses, which are breaches are all at all. And they cost four Chaos each, so it's one Chaos per map. So to search for these, go into Trade, and you just do Tilde, and then you type in Enchant Belong, and then you just select the option that says breaches belong to and then select all at all from the drop down list. And that's it. The maps will mostly likely take six, seven, eight minutes to complete for most players as you want to stay and complete all the breaches and you want to stay and do the expedition. You also might want to do your arch nemesis recipes as you're going along. And as with other strategies, look for altars that boost up currency and scarab drops. Now, in regard to map selection, I really like Strand for this method as it's really open, so it's almost impossible that your encounters spawn in a bad place. Now, I was using City Square, but both breaches and expeditions kept spawning in little alleyways or in corners or grouped up with loads of obstacles, and it just made it longer, more frustrating, and it returned less loot. So that covers the Atlas tree and the general setup. There's not much to discuss regarding running the strategy, but I'll quickly mention a few points. So for Expedition, spend a minute looking at the modifiers. Look for increased logbook chance and increased artifact drop rates. These are going to massively help. So you select these as soon as you can. And then from there, just hit as many chests and Expedition monsters as possible. And just watch out that you don't take any nodes that are going to make uh, the mobs too hard or almost impossible. And then for Breach, you need to be as quick as you can as they open and close really quickly as we're using Flash Breach. Prioritise rare enemies and clasped hands and look out for Ornator himself who will make an appearance or two. As I said, complete your favourite Arch Nemesis recipes as you go along and add these into the farming strategy. And lastly, I would say check your sextant mods when you roll them as some of them are worth a lot of money. 
So when I was applying sextants, I hit a bosses drop conqueror maps one and I sold it for 1.3x. At the end of the strategy, you're going to end up with loads of expedition currency, reroll currency, and hopefully a few logbooks. And then it's up to you whether you sell the currency and logbooks you get or you use them yourself. Now, I've been doing this strategy now for a few days as it really suits my playstyle and it's super safe. And this is shown by the fact I'm well on the way to level 98. It's also really, really low cost compared to some other strategies and in terms of what you get back. So the question that you're all dying to know the answer to is how much can you make per hour? And with all strategies, it varies because you could get so much juice in the maps. It really is wildly different in terms of the items that you can get drop. So I'm not going to give you a you're going to earn X per hour because I might be well over or well underestimated. But what I'll do is show you the loot that I had drop running eight maps and then talk through the sort of loot you're going to get and the sort of loot that you're guaranteed to get. So, so these maps took around 45 to 50 minutes to fully clear a loot, but let's be safe and just say it takes an hour to clear these eight maps. So I firstly got rid of anything that's not worth money from the dump tab um, and that you need to sell in bulk like fusings, ults, jewelers, stuff like that. I've also traded up all the essences to deafen and just chucked anything into another tab that's not worth anything. So all it's left me with is one essence that's worth money. Um, but the others, as I said, I can use to try and hit some lucky crafts. So here's the loot in the tab, but it's probably easier for me to document it in a Google sheet and then we'll go over it. So we'll move over to that. So as you can see, we had some really nice juicy drops, which may be lucky, but with all the quantity and mobs you end up getting in maps, you're bound to get some high value drops, whether that be conqueror maps, a good sextant roll, synth maps, raw exalts, raw divines. You're going to get something that's worth money because of all the juice you're getting into the map. So in total in the eight maps, we made a profit of five and a half exalts with stuff that's super easy to sell or really useful to use yourself. Don't look at these as, oh, I've got 5.5x profit because people buy these things for a reason. They can make money from buying them. So if there's stuff that you want to use yourself, go for it. You're probably going to make more money than just selling it. Uh, I, for example, don't sell the reroll tokens for Expedition because you're going to end up with lots of currency from doing this mechanic. So you might as well use the reroll tokens. Um, so what I'll do is I'll look for big ticket items that I'm never going to get from Gwenin. I'll look for log books from Danning, and then I'll look for exalts from Tusion. And like I said, you'll end up with a load of currency. It makes sense to use the reroll tokens. So that covers off the strategy. The last thing I want to mention is don't follow this or any other strategy mindlessly. First, check the value of what you target farming. Has this method suddenly become popular over the last couple of days and the value that they're claiming in the video has now tanked? If you are following a really popular guide, that is going to happen at some point. And that's the point where you need to look for another strategy. And the easiest thing to do is look for something that no one else is doing. And that's kind of the reason I chose the All Natal Breaches as a nice addition. It's not amazing income, but in eight maps, I've got two full breach stones, which gets you back 46 chaos. Not a huge amount, but the scarabs and the sextant mod that I buy, it costs 16c for all those maps. So it's 30 chaos, easy profit, and breaches add a lot of juice into the maps. I'll also say if you're like an eight hour a day gamer running your own strategies, this particular strategy might look like a complete time waster. But for someone like me who might log in and do two hour stints, this works really well as it's fast, fun, it's easy, and it's got potential to earn some really good currency. Um, so that's it for this video. I hope it helps some of the people out who have said they're struggling to farm a bit of currency this league. As always, thanks for watching. Take care and see you in the next video.